In this video, I want to talk about a VS Code extension that allows you to work with your Mongo database. Look at this behind me. Here, I've got this plugin, which I'm going to tell you what it is shortly. And I can see the databases that I've got. I can see the collections in the database and I can see the documents. So here's a document here and I can edit as well and save to it. So before we get into that, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you haven't already. Hit the bell button so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. All right, let's get started. So I'm really keen to show you this plugin. So this plugin is Azure Databases and you don't actually have to host your database on Azure itself. What I really like about it is you get this extra menu down the left hand side and then when it starts, you just have this and you know, you can right click and attach a database. You can choose Mongo, SQL, loads of others and they're adding more all the time. And once you've done that, it will appear. So this is my local host. You can see it's 127001 on the Mongo port. And if I expand that now, you see the databases and then I can expand any one and then you get to see the collections and then I can expand also the collection and go into the document. So here, this is my document. It's got some reference IDs and so forth. But what I want to show you is I can make a change to this to say instead of 191, I can make it 291. You can see it's got the usual dot at the top to say the file has changed. So if I try to close it, it will say, do you want to save? I want to say no. So then I want to refresh this, open the same file. And again, it still says 191. But if I hit two, so change it to 291 and do command S, the white dot at the top has now disappeared and I close it and I do a refresh to prove to you that it has actually changed. So we're actually reading and writing to the database. And that's pretty cool. You get to do it within VS Code, within your IDE. So therefore, if you know, you're trying to play with some test data, you can change it directly and see how it affects your code. Obviously, write automated testing, that's super important. And if you're doing automated tests and you want to see what state of the database is in, it's another great thing. So you can see it directly and you can add multiple ones. So I've got one here. I could add a remote one, lots of things that can be done. Lots of you ask me in my live streams which plugin I use for this. So I'm really excited to actually make this short video and show you what it is. There's probably so many other features that I don't use yet but this is what I use it for at the moment. Let me know what you would use it for. I mean, I can see it also has graph and let's have a let's scroll down actually. Let's have a quick look together. Okay, I've seen that before, so that one's fine, but let's see what else it has. Okay, well, it's got Gremlin to query graphs. I mean, I don't know what that means, but that looks pretty impressive. And I think I need to have a look into that. Okay, so it's showing the relationships between it, but it's something I'd have to have a play and see because you can also filter it down while it's graph, right? But the visualization is pretty, pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you use any other plugins to access your Mongo or other database, it'd be really good to see what tools you work with and it's great to compare. Don't forget to join us in our Eddie Hub Discord so we can chat between live streams and video. It's always great to geek out with you about open source on a daily basis. Link in the description below.